morning. My name is Amar Sama, and I'm also a junior at Staten Island Academy. So today I'm going to be speaking to you about dynamic websites. And I'm sure many of you know what that means, but just to clarify, uh, the Web 2.0 is made up of static websites and dynamic websites. And the main difference is that dynamic websites have the ability to, to a certain extent, update themselves and edit information without the webmaster having to do so. So that takes the load off the person running the website and it also makes it more convenient for those on the website. So, um, I actually have oh, an example right here. It's, so I'm also in AP Chemistry, and that's a very demanding course. So I always see myself going to a periodic table. And I guess for the first half of the year, I used the periodic table in the textbook. But we started learning so much more information, I needed something more. So I found this online. It's ptable.com. It's a dynamic periodic table. And it does, here's all the demonstrator right here, it lets you do so many things like change the temperature, launch phase changes. So I thought that was really cool. And um, you can do that. <laughs> and where the dynamic sort of part comes in is if you go to properties, there's a little drop down menu here that has Wikipedia web elements. So you can get live information from either of those websites, whichever element you click on. But you get the idea. So, um, and for a more advanced student, there's also three-dimensional orbital shapes that come up for every single element. And I guess for those students who are maybe learning chemistry for the first time, this isn't as important. But when you're, more, when you're learning more advanced chemistry, it does come into play. So, are there any chemistry teachers here besides my own teacher? <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you're not, um, I know that it's a useful tool for students and teachers alike because teachers can use it in the classroom and students can use it at home. I think it's equally valuable. So, I guess that's just an example of a, a dynamic website. And I guess my question to you guys would be, how do you think this can be, this sort of concept can be implemented into science further because it's definitely possible to see it right here. I see uh, lots of applications for it and wish that I could find more of them as a teacher. Um, I, I'm not a person who has the knowledge to create this kind of thing, but I know that I look for them for um, demonstrating to, solution, um, to students uh, kinetics, equilibrium processes, um, solution processes in chemistry to really um, bring it to life because my experience with you guys in the classroom was that when you can really visualize something, um, it, it speaks to um, multiple types of learners in the room. Um, so it's for a, a science that's very um, uh, idea-driven um, and not always as tangible for um, being able to see something. Um, it, it's very, very helpful. Yeah, I definitely agree, because here you can see that even though it has all these advanced features that some people might not understand, it's still a basic periodic table, it's color-coded, it's easy to follow. So I think that's great that it gives you different levels of, I guess, information. It has all these periodic trends and important facts on the side here. So I guess this is just one example, and it can be implemented in other sciences as well. Um, does this, if you didn't go into it, does this have uh, any interactive graphics at all? Like, are there um, well, any, any, any interactive structures that you can... I guess as far as structures, it would just be the orbital shapes. Mm -hmm. But you saw them earlier. It gives you a three-dimensional representation of the orbital shapes for every element. Well, um, would it, uh, are you able to interact with it and move the, the three-dimensional structure around? Yeah, you can yeah. move around with your mouse. Do you find that useful? Yeah, no. But yeah, I mean, you still have the three dimensional representation. So it's a lot better than something you'd see on textbook. Right. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that, if that interactivity, if you're able to see like the three dimensional structure, if that yeah. helps you understand it much better. Mm -hmm. Yes. As an entrepreneur, this is very 
will be very essential because I'm dealing with PhDs in chemistry and physics and stuff like that. And about three sentences later, I go, ooh, what are they talking about? But if you kids at your age are a lot better educated at this, I think I could understand this, or at least I would have some knowledge of what they were talking about, so it would spend some money to do something. Yeah, it's definitely easy to follow up. I think part of the problem is there are more things like this, but a lot of places charge for them. Like I know in, in, in my biology labs throughout my education, they had like dissect a frog on the computer or, you know, run these simulations, but a lot of them aren't free. I think a lot of them need to be more accessible than, so you don't have to pay as a class for who to do it. Great. Well, thank you, Omar. We're going to move on.